Welcome back to another Classroom DLE video and in today's video we'll be talking about none other than Takuya Yagami, a character that was introduced in Classroom DLE second year who at first didn't seem like a major threat and it seemed like he was just simply a very ordinary high school student. However, that would be far from the case. As second year went on, we got to see what kind of person Yagami truly is, but ultimately this will lead to his massive downfall in this series and showing us once again how Ayana Koji is able to defeat his opponents. But before we get into why Yagami went downhill and what caused his downfall let's just start from the beginning and find out who actually Yagami is. So in the beginning of second year we are introduced to Yagami in which it seems that he's just simply another first year student that just entered the school who is in class B. And it was during his introduction that we get a little bit of his backstory. I say backstory with massive quotation marks because his original backstory wasn't actually accurate. In fact, it was all just made up. You see, his initial backstory was that he happened to actually be in the same middle school as Kushida. However, one interesting detail to note here is that neither Kushida or Horikita had any remembrance of a person named Yagami in the middle school. It almost seemed like they never heard of this person up until now. However, it seems that Horikita and Kushida weren't really interested in figuring out whether this was true or not and didn't investigate any further. Now the interesting thing about Yagami is the fact that even though he was a new character in second year, he didn't really have a lot of scenes that involved around him. Don't get me wrong, that's not saying that he didn't have any scenes whatsoever because he did, but comparing him to other characters like Nanaus and Ishka who have way more scenes than him, he didn't really have that many scenes in the series. Now you may be saying that's because he wasn't an interesting character or he wasn't going to be a big impact to the story, but that's not the case because you'll notice very quickly if you're up to date with second year is that there is a reason why Yagami didn't have a lot of scenes and it's because he was actually working behind the scenes. We'll notice very quickly how very secretive Yagami is and make sure no one knew about his plans whatsoever unless there were people who were in on his plan as well. And you may be saying why is he doing all this? Well it will later on be revealed that Yagami is the second white room student. You see it wasn't just Ichika that was the only person out of the white room, it was also Yagami who was also tasked into getting Ayana Koji back to the white room. And unlike Ishika who admired Ayana Koji and was willing to betray the white room, Yagami was the complete opposite as he was very loyal to the white room and wanted to complete his mission into bringing Ayana Koji back to the white room. And this is where we get to see how much of a dangerous and dark character Yagami truly is. Because even though he puts this persona that he's just this nice kid who is willing to help anybody no matter what, in reality the only reason why he's helping people is for his own desires and for his own goal. You see there are many examples where he does this. The first example is when he actually convinces Utamiya to team up with him only to betray him later on and get one of his classmates expelled and then frame it on Hosen. The other example is when he actually convinces Kushida to team up with him because he promised her that if she teams up with him and follows his plans then most likely Ayana Koji and Horikita will get expelled. And lastly Yagami actually targets Sato as well and tells Sato that if he helps her then she will have more of a chance to be with Ayana Koji. All these moments are great examples of Yagami being able to manipulate people into doing what he tells them to do in order for him to achieve his ultimate goal and that is to defeat Ayana Koji. And if you want more examples as to what makes Yagami a very dangerous and twisted character, well you have to keep in mind as well is the fact that Ishika, you know the girl that has a bit of an ego and seems to be a very strong and very difficult opponent to defeat, she is afraid of Yagami as shown in volume 4.5 of second year that even if Yagami is just close to her, she she is very careful around him and even puts her guard up in order to not leave any openings for Yagami to attack her. And during an interaction between Kushida and Yagami, Kushida actually calls Yagami a devil with a kind face. So you know you're bad when out of all the characters of this series, Kushida is the one telling you that. And let me remind you, Kushida was always a two-faced, she always never really showed her true personality. So the fact that a person like her is calling Yagami a devil says a lot. Not to mention that during the island exam of second year, Yagami actually decides to go and beat up a few members of Ryuin's class which is probably something that you shouldn't do if you don't want to deal with Ryuin because even though Ryuin has a very bad attitude, the one thing that we've seen a lot about Ryuin is that he actually does care about his class. 
So it wasn't a surprise that when he found out about this, he really wanted to find out who actually did that and make them pay. But of course, Jogmi was confident at this time because he's a very smart individual and at the time, he knew actually how to cover his tracks and knew that if he did it correctly, he would be able to get away with this and for a while, he did. But then we go into volume 7 of second year, aka the culture festival arc. Now, if there's one character who was noticing a lot of things involving Yagami, is none other than Horikito. For a while, Horikita started noticing a lot of things about Yagami and was wondering if there is more about Yagami than meets the eye. And it almost seemed that Yagami was intentionally trying to tell Horikita that there was more things about him. It was almost as if he wanted Horikita to be suspicious of him and wanted to see what she was going to do. However, things wouldn't go on his favor as towards the end of the culture festival when she and him are alone in the student council room, this is where quickly Horikita realizes that there's something going on. However, for a time being, there is somebody that decides to help Horikita out and that's none other than Ibuki. Ibuki saw that Horikita was being followed by someone towards the student council room and decided to see what was going on. And this is where Ibuki grabs Yagumi and restrains him. Even though Horikita tells her to let him go, Ibuki tells her no because Yagumi is very dangerous. And then another unexpected person comes and that is Nagumo. Now you may be wondering why is Nagumo in this room? Well, if you have read the culture festival arc, you would know that there was actually an issue that Nagumo had and it was the fact that there was somebody in the school that was spreading rumors about him that were not so great and he wanted to find out who the culprit was and in this moment he wanted to know if it was Yagami who was the culprit. At first Yagami tries to play the persona of being a friendly person who would never do such a thing but Nagumo isn't convinced and this is where we get to see that the pressure is starting to get to Yagami and this is where Yagami makes the accusation that Nagumo and Horikita are in a plan with Ayana Koji to get rid of him and this of course shocks the both of them the fact that he mentioned Ayana Koji's name and he based this on a secret message that was in a love letter. Now you may be saying what is this love letter that you're talking about? Well before the confrontation there was actually a thing that happened before in which there was actually a girl who gave Horikita a love letter in which she said that this love letter was for Nagumo and that if she could deliver it for him since they were both student council members. At first Horikita didn't want to do it but she eventually does do it for this person. But due to Nagumo being in a bad mood after finding out there were rumors about him that were not so great, she decided to not give him the love letter directly and ask Yagami to do it for her. And it will be assumed that it was during this time period that Yagami eventually does open the letter and finds out about the secret message that is in the letter. And because of this, Yagami comes up with the conclusion that this is all a big part of Ayana Koji's plan and that the final part of his plan will be that he is going to confront him once and for all, having the battle that he always wanted a battle between him and Ayana Koji and it seems that that might be the case that he starts to hear footsteps coming towards the student council room and he thinks that this is Ayana Koji revealing himself however his world shatters when it's not Ayana Koji is in fact Ryuen and a few members of the teachers of the school. Everyone is confused as to why Ryuen's here but Ryuen decides to talk and say that the reason why he's here is because he got a bit of information that says that the person who is responsible for his classmates getting injured is Yagami. Now this evidence was only circumstantial meaning that it wasn't 100% concrete proof that Yagami was actually the one that injured Ruin's classmates. However, you would think that Yagami would notice this and would try to make sure that he is not found guilty of those actions. However, due to the amount of pressure and it's very clear that Yagami can't handle everything being thrown at him, he finally snaps. Realizing that he's not going to have the belt that he wanted which was between him and Ayana Koji. Realizing that Ayana Koji had defeated him without even having to look at him or be physically there to see his defeat that's when Yagami snaps and reveals his true personality and at that moment he reveals that he has intentions of ending Ayana Koji's life. Without even caring that there's people around him that heard what he just said. Some teachers try to stop him but they completely fail as Yagami shows how strong he actually is. Ibuki tries to stop him but she is no match for Yagami. Ichika comes in with tears in her eyes telling Yagami to stop or that she will have to fight him no matter what. Showing us once again just how scared Ichika is of Yagami but how she was willing to fight Yagami for him to stop. And just when it seems that we're about to have an Ichika versus Yagami fight, that's when some people of the white room come in and intervene, taking Yagami away after he has failed his mission to take down Ayana Koji. 
and that will be the end of Yagami as later on we will find out that he was expelled from the school and most likely he has returned back to the white room. Now you may be wondering why it took so long for Ayana Koji to take down Yagami. Well the answer is pretty simple. It's not that Ayana Koji couldn't take down Yagami, it's that he chose not to for a while. You see Ayana Koji didn't see Yagami as a threat but due to someone requesting Ayana Koji to take down Yagami, this being the third white room student that to this day we still don't know anything about their identity, actually wanted Ayana Koji to take down Yagami because he was causing a bunch of problems behind the scenes. So with the help of this third white room student that we know nothing about. Out, Tsubaki and Utumiya, two people that are from class C of first years, they all came up with a plan to take down Yagami and that is how Yagami was defeated. So overall, what was the mistake that Yagami did when he was being confronted by a bunch of people? It's very quite simple, he wasn't thinking ahead. You see, Yagami clearly was feeling the pressure and because there were so many things being thrown at him, he didn't really know which one he should be focusing first. If this was Ayana Koji, he probably would have had a plan as to how to deal with this kind of stuff and would have known what to say or do. Now of course we won't know what that will be because we haven't seen Ayana Koji in that kind of situation like Yagami but it's not surprising if it ever did happen to Ayana Koji that he will be able to get away with it. Of course that is just an assumption so don't take it too seriously and I think the other reason why the downfall of Yagami happened was because he was too overconfident. You see Yagami thought that because he was from the white room and he was considered to be very strong and very smart not only that but he also noticed how much of a threatening person he is. I mean he saw firsthand just how scared Ishka was whenever he was around her. This gave him confidence that he was going to be the one to be able to take down Ayana Koji and bring him back to the white room. However that was not the case because he would later realize when he was defeated by Ayana Koji how much of a powerful opponent Ayana Koji really is and that he is miles away from ever being just like Ayana Koji. So it's not really surprising that he was defeated because he thought that he had everything under control. He thought that he was going to be able to win this long battle. He thought that because he was working behind the scenes no one would ruin his plans. However reality can be a harsh thing sometimes because everything that he did, everything that he created was all destroyed by just one person and that is Ayana Koji. It will probably be a really long time till we get to see Yagami once again but I am curious if there will be a point in which he does return to the series. I highly doubt it because I'm not really sure what he's going to do afterwards. I mean he was already defeated by Ayana Koji. I highly doubt he's going to try to get revenge on Ayana Koji knowing that no matter what he does Ayana Koji could easily destroy him. So who knows what's going to happen to this character. Who knows if he'll ever make a return to the series after this defeat but we'll just have to to wait and see and with that that's pretty much the entire video i hope you enjoyed it and i'll see you next time